Fourth Day of Waiting on God by Andrew Murray. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Christopher Smith. Waiting on God for Supplies. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Psalm 145, verses 14 and 15. Psalm 104 is a psalm of creation, and the words, These all wait upon thee, were used with reference to the animal creation. Here we have a psalm of the kingdom, and the eyes of all wait upon thee appears specially to point to the needs of God's saints, of all that fall, and them that be bowed down. What the universe and the animal creation does unconsciously, God's people are to do intelligently and voluntarily. Man is to be the interpreter of nature. He is to prove that there is nothing more noble or more blessed in the exercise of our free will than to use it in waiting upon God. If an army has been sent out to march into an enemy's country, and tidings are received that it is not advancing, the question is at once asked, what may be the cause of delay? The answer will very often be, waiting for supplies. All the stores of provisions or clothing or ammunition have not arrived. Without these it dare not proceed. It is no otherwise in the Christian life. Day by day, at every step, we need our supplies from above. And there is nothing so needful as to cultivate that spirit of dependence on God and of confidence in Him which refuses to go on without the needed supply of grace and strength. If the question be asked whether this be anything different from what we do when we pray, the answer is that there may be much praying with but very little waiting on God. In praying, we are often occupied with ourselves, with our own needs, and our own efforts in the presentation of them. In waiting upon God, the first thought is of the God upon whom we wait. We enter His presence, and we feel we need just to be quiet, so that He, as God, can overshadow us with Himself. God longs to reveal Himself, to fill us with Himself. Waiting on God gives him time in his own way and divine power to come to us. It is specially at the time of prayer that we ought to set ourselves to cultivate this spirit. Before you pray, bow quietly before God, just to remember and realize who he is, how near he is, how certainly he can and will help. Just be still before him, and allow his Holy Spirit to waken and stir up in your soul the childlike disposition of absolute dependence and confident expectation. Wait upon God as a living being, as the living God who notices you and is just longing to fill you with his salvation. Wait on God till you know you have met him. Prayer will then become so different. And when you are praying, let there be intervals of silence, reverent stillness of soul, in which you yield yourself to God, in case he may have aught he wishes to teach you or to work in you. Waiting on him will become the most blessed part of prayer, and the blessing thus obtained will be doubly precious as the fruit of such fellowship with the Holy One. God has so ordained it, in harmony with his holy nature and with ours, that waiting on him should be the honour we give him. Let us bring him the service, gladly and truthfully. He will reward it abundantly. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Dear soul, God provides in nature for the creatures he has made, how much more will he provide in grace for those he has redeemed? Learn to say of every want and every failure and every lack of needful grace, I have waited too little upon God, or he would have given me in due season all I needed. And say then too, My soul, wait thou only upon God. End of fourth day.